Welcome back to another edition of Mac Break Studio. We're here in the digital barn in Prescott and we're talking about Funnel Cut 10.4, specifically the new and awesome color grading and color correction tools in Funnel Cut 10.4. Yes. And I use the word awesome. Yes, because the, the title of this episode is the awesome hue sampling. <laughs> okay, so right. I'm taking a little bit of a deep dive because we have overview tutorials that are, are free on YouTube that give you a sense of the general features of the new color correction features, and we have a detailed, fully in-depth color correction tutorial, but I wanted to bring a couple things out to people's attention. And what I'm going to talk about is color masking versus hue sampling, and why hue sampling is so awesome. So I'll show okay. you what I mean by okay, that. Great. So I'm going to start with this shot of this pizza where I've already done a, an initial correction with the color wheels as opposed to the color board. And I'm, I'm partial to color wheels, yeah. um, but you can accomplish some of the same things with a color board. It kind of depends on your preference, but color wheels have a few What I like tools. about the wheels, by the way, you look at them, I could tell immediately you have a grade What's because the, the little wings on the side, yeah. they're all lit up. Well, you see everything. You see exposure, you see saturation, you see color balance in one shot. By the way, if you switch it to a single view of a single wheel and then drag this out, you'll get all the wheels in a, in a little different layout if you like to look at it that nice. way. Nice. So just a little side tip there. Um, but, so I've done a basic correction, which I'll toggle on and off here just to adjust the contrast and color balance a little bit. But I want to make these greens pop some more. So I want to increase the saturation of the greens without affecting anything else. So what I'll do is add a second color wheels correction. And as a side note, it gets named color wheels two. I would love in the future if you could rename these corrections as you stack them up, because this, this is what they're named, Color Wheels 1, Color Wheels 2. Like minor, masks, because you can rename masks. Yeah, like, it'd be nice to do that, but minor things. So anyway, I'm going to add a color mask uh, and sample the greens, and we can see there I've sampled them, okay? And from there, I can increase the saturation of just the greens. And I've got the mask down here, and I can hold the Command key down in order to see what's selected. And you can see, actually, there's more than the greens being selected, but it's a pretty good selection, although there's, you know, the hands are being selected a little bit in there. I can toggle that off and on and we can see uh, the impact. And it does, a, the color mask does a pretty decent job on the right kind of shot. However, let's go to this shot of our, our friend Abba driving this uh, little sports car. And I want to do the same thing here. Okay, so. Color uh, mask. Yeah, so I have the color correction, the color wheels up, but there's no color mask available. Like, what's going on? So, in order to get the color mask available, you have to make a change to something. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a little change and reset it just to get the color mask available. Well, why? It's just not there by default. Okay. You gotta, <laughs> so it just, it'll get people. But if you wanna add a color mask before making a correction, you gotta make a little change just for it to appear, okay? Seems more like a bug to me, but <laughs> I, what, what do I It's a feature. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna now sample the car. And notice, look, I can sample the bottom of the car Okay, right. or I could sample the top of the car, but if I try to get all of those, basically all of these different saturation and brightness levels in, it's starting to sample a whole bunch of the scene. Yeah. Look, I don't even have the hood isn't even included. If yeah. I try to include it, I'm including all this other stuff. So if I try to make a, a change now to something, it's gonna affect more than the car, Got okay? It. If I hold the command key down and drag, look how much, it's, all this white is selected. Look, right. everything's selected. Yeah. So the color mask is not working for it's me kind here. of a shotgun approach. Yeah, however, if I turn that off and go to hue curves, uh, hue and saturation curves, okay? And I wanna adjust the color of this car, so I'll sample it with hue versus hue, and I'll get a little sample. That vertical line indicates what I've sampled and that's the control point there. These other ones are lock points on either side of it, except they wraps around right. uh, since it's right to the edge. So now if I drag this up, look, I can precisely control the color of that car. By the way, if I hold the shift key while I drag, I'll go directly up and down without going sideways. Nice. Very easy, and I'm not affecting anything else unless something else in the scene has that exact same hue. Color. Yeah, um, hue. I can adjust these lock points here, again, by holding the shift key down to adjust the range. So the question is, why does this work so much better than the color mask? Okay, and that's what I want to address because I think having a good understanding of why these tools work the, the way they do helps you decide what to do right. in a color grading situation. So I'm going to go to a color wheel. Now, color can be represented by red, green, blue, by the primary color channels, but you can also break it down into hue, saturation, and brightness, right? The three sort of components of color. That, those three components form like a 3D 
space or 3D cube, which is hard to show on a screen. So this just represents here, we've got hue going around it and we've got saturation. So in the middle is no saturation and the edge is fully saturated, right. but no brightness information because there's nothing like black in here for instance. Sure. But check this out. If I put a color mask on this, so I'll add a color mask and I'll sample say something in the green area here. As I drag out to sample more, Notice how the sample is expanding in all directions. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want green, but I just want all of the saturation levels of green. I don't want other colors, but this is growing in all directions as a sample. As opposed to, let's go ahead and add the hue saturation curves. And with this, I'll sample the same area. And it doesn't give you the same visual feedback. But if I go ahead and just make a change there, oh, wow. look what the selection did here. Oh, wow. And in fact, I can go ahead and hold the shift key down and make that a little narrower. So if I go back to the inspector here and turn each of these on and off, the hue saturation version is giving me a slice of the color wheel, right. which means just that particular hue for all saturation right. levels. And the slice right? is defined in the curve itself. Yeah, as opposed to the color mask, again, let me hold down the, if we see, can see it there, that gives us more of a, of a ball, an expanding ball. Right. So it's including additional hues that we don't necessarily want. Right, so you can just narrow the selection to a specific exactly. range of green as opposed to widening all exactly. these green pixels. So let's look at it with brightness. So here we have hue and brightness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, again here, if I go to the color inspector and add a color mask, and I'll do it here again. As I drag out, it expands it's in all directions. Expanding blob. So left and right is including more hues. Um, so I'll do that, and then maybe I'll just I'll shift the color so we can see it becomes visible. Yeah. Okay, that that blob becomes visible. Yeah. And then I'll add the hue saturation curves and go to the hue, hue sat curve and select there as well, and make a change. And here, I get this. Um, slice okay it's a little bit to the side there of where i sampled right let's just move that over there a bit but it's a slice okay instead of a ball so what it's doing it's selecting that particular hue but all saturation and brightness levels for that hue right. with nothing else so if we go back to the car this car has a particular hue by default let's turn this off it's it's red but it has very bright reds yeah, saturated and very dark reds, reds. Yeah, saturated and saturated and because highlight. of all the reflections on it. Right. So that's why the hue saturation sampler is perfect for this type of situation because it just picks all that, uh, all those different brightness Tonalities. levels and saturation levels of that red color and allows you to do a very good, clean color correction. Right, without with ignoring a lot of the other stuff in the frame that, yeah. that the actual mask... Now there are, if you do. look hard, there's some you know, red reflectors in the back of these cars, taillights, that get affected, but you can draw very quickly. You can add a, a shape mask around just this object to eliminate everything else. It can be very rough, and then nothing else would be affected. Yeah. No so, you know, just wanted to sort of lay out there why I love the, the hue sampling. No, it's no, so why great. it's awesome. Why it's awesome, right. right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> excellent. He's got a ton of these amazing tricks up his sleeve and you want to check out his advanced color correction tools available at rippletraining.com. It's a lot of information and he's just scratching the surface and hope you found this useful. I know I did. I'm just like, <laughs> okay. So check us out, Ripple Training, what, uh, all the usual social media channels and uh, did you want to say something? No. Else? Okay. No, that's anyway, so we'll see you next time. He's got way more to show. Check us out then.